The first reading is a poem, Old Friends, by Freya Manfred. Old friends are a steady spring rain, or late summer sunshine edging into fall, or frosted leaves along a snowy path, a voice for all seasons saying, I know you. The older I grow, the more I fear I'll lose my old friends, as if too many years have scrolled by since the day we sprang forth seeking each other. Old friend, I knew you before we met. I saw you at the window of my soul. I heard you in the steady millstone of my heart, grinding grain for our daily bread. You are sedimentary, rock-solid cousin Earth, where I stand firmly astonished by your grace and truth. And gratitude comes to me and says, Tell me anything, and I will listen. Ask me anything, and I will answer you. The second reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45, from the New Revised Standard Version. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. So just like that, we're at the fourth Sunday in Advent. Before another Sunday arrives, Christmas will have come and gone. And a week after that, we will be embarking on the journey of a new year whose destination is yet to unfold. And the nebulous nature of that destination has all of us just a little bit anxious. We've been feeling it this week through the experiences of our friends in New York whose livelihoods depend on Broadway and larger entertainment venues that are now suddenly prevented from moving forward once again. For two weeks in June of this year, we gathered in this room without masks. And then Delta came along and changed our course. Now Omicron is here and we're hoping for the best. We're doing our best. We're finding ways to continue to be in community with whatever restrictions come our way from time to time. Our plan is to gather here in this room Friday night for Christmas Eve and find together a common source of hope and peace and joy and love. And today it's the message of love that calls us forward. Love, as it is found in the Christian tradition, has often become a theological proposition. And that's understandable, since the text of Scripture also makes it clear that God is love. 
Thousands of volumes have been written and countless sermons preached on that idea. Today's gospel lesson, however, brings love into a realm that is more clearly and more easily manifested, the realm of feeling and experience, the kind that you and I can experience every single day. When we say God is love, and if when we say that we are thinking of God as existing in some far off heaven, well, it's pretty hard to feel that experientially. But when we speak of God being here, here, incarnate, not only in Jesus, but in you, in me, when we speak of God being here and in the birds and in the trees and in the sky and the ocean, when we speak of God in our children, in our pets, in our closest friends, and even in our not so close friends, when love is here, God is here, and it's pretty simple if we can allow that in. And that's what this fourth candle today signifies, allowing love in. Mary and her cousin Elizabeth are a perfect example in the nativity story, we are told that they are cousins and that they are in some unusual circumstances. And the story of the nativity revolves around women in a narrative that usually revolves around the men. Two pregnant women in a room together exuding a vibrational energy that we can still feel after 2,000 years. That is some big energy, I want to tell you. And there's joy in their meeting and in their greeting. These two women have a history, and the children within them have a destiny. And this time together provides this energetic nexus for the entirety of the good news, the gospel, to unfold in them. There's momentum in this exchange, and it refuses to be interrupted. And I'd say it comes not from some theological proposition that the church has put forward over centuries, but it instead it resides in relationship, the one between these two women and the sons that they carry. John the baptizer, and Jesus of Nazareth. We've always been clear about propositional truth here in this place. We've never been here at CCC in this community to answer all the questions or to tell each other, let alone the rest of the world, what they should or should not believe about this person we call Jesus. Even our own denomination, the United Church of Christ, is united only in the quest for this kind of exploration. The simple teaching that forms our bedrock, our foundation, is that we love one another as we have been loved, and that we treat each other and others outside of these walls in all the ways that we would want to be treated and that we would be tender-hearted, forgiving, compassionate, loving toward other people, toward creatures, toward the very earth itself. That's pretty much all of the dogma we have. And when love is expressed this way, it is experiential in nature. And because of that, it has the opportunity to be practiced energetically. And it gives us the opportunity to manifest something like these leaps of joy that thrill us still from this ancient story. 
We need not be physically gestational to be consumed with this joyful, loving, creative energy in the presence of others, particularly these old friends. And we have old friends who know us well and love us anyhow, without condition, without expectation, and without judgment. This divine spirit is alive and well in those around us. And most pronounced in our significant friendships. And in those friendships, most recognizable after a period of absence. I'm so grateful for this beautiful poem called Old Friends, included in this year's Advent Reader. It was contributed by Jo Lynn, and I'm particularly grateful for it. It captures the feeling of this gospel lesson and brings it alive for me in ways that never before have I experienced. Old friends are a steady spring rain. Just take that in for a moment. A late summer sunshine edging into the fall. Frosted leaves along a snowy path. It's not too California, but a voice for all seasons saying, I love you. I know you. You know, most of us can sit here today and put a face on those phrases. A friend who might be a new friend or an old friend or something in between. One who feels as welcome and as comforting as that steady spring rain. We could maybe sit around a campfire and tell our friendship stories. And they would come alive for us because at one time or another, we've all been there. We've all been in the presence of somebody who instantly understands, easily loves, and automatically forgives. They weep with us when we weep. They feel joy in our joys. And with little to no effort, they stay with us through the years. Not because we see them or speak with them all the time, but because they, along with ourselves, have the ability to simply pick up where we left off without any expectations, and especially without hoops to jump through. Jesus had many such friends in his short life. Lazarus, of course, comes to mind along with his sisters, Martha and Mary. He knew them well. He visited them often in a village called Bethany. He enjoyed their hospitality. He wept with them in their sorrows and celebrated their joys. I'd like for us to grasp one very simple idea today. That an old friend, is the conduit of the divine. In other words, there is this div divine friend who dwells within us. Don't ever let the theological term Holy Spirit distract you from the experience of it. Paul said in the letter to the Romans, that God's spirit bears witness with our spirit, that we belong. This is an ancient expression of something that remains active in us for eternity. That spirit recognizes that which is like itself. And so when Mary stepped into her cousin's house that day, it was like instant fireworks. You are sedimentary, rock-solid cousin earth where I stand firmly, astonished 
by your grace and truth. And gratitude comes to me and says, tell me anything and I will listen. Ask me anything and I will answer you. Well, this candle that we light today is in honor and recognition of our divine friend who comes to us in many forms, but especially in the form of an old friend. So enjoy the reunion today. Enjoy the union of body, soul, and spirit, and may this season be a season of oneness. Maybe this is the time to reach out to someone you haven't heard from in a long time and pick up where you left off. This is our gift of holy love. Oh.
For me.